back by popular demand. This is Sonia Stills, your Senior Associate Commissioner with the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference, and I am here with your MEAC timeout. Today, we're coming to you with everything MEAC, from compliance updates to feature sports and plays of the week. First things first, here to update you on this month's featured events is Jasmine Richmond. What's up, MEAC fans? It's your girl, Jasmine. And as we all know, it's Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And we wear pink all month long, not just on Wednesdays. On Saturday, October 26th, we'll be hosting our annual MEAC Cross Country Championship in Smyrna, Delaware, with the women starting at 11 a.m. and our men at noon. But wait, there's more. I'm a survivor. I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to stop. What? I'm a Wakata. That's right, I'm a Survivor Breast Cancer Balloon Launch will begin at 10.20 a.m. right before the women's race at 11 a.m. Back to you, Ms. Stills. Thanks, Jasmine. Here's Jazz and Jalen to give us updates on NCAA compliance. Hey, MEAC fam, I'm Jasmine. And I'm Jalen. And, and welcome, welcome to, to the, the Compliance, compliance Corner. Corner. Where we keep you updated on the latest compliance news. First up, the NCAA has now established the Former Student Athlete Degree Completion Program. This initiative stems from the legislation that was adopted requiring all Division I institutions to establish a process to fund a degree completion for former men's and women's basketball student athletes who meet certain criteria. The application for funding for Spring Summer 2020 enrollment is now available through Program Hub. Applications are due October 15, 2019. Hey Jalen, did you know that for the first time ever, a portion of Division I revenue will be distributed to member schools based on the academic achievement of student athletes. This new model basically rewards schools with higher graduation rates and academic success with more funds. What impact can you predict this will have on the experience of student athletes? As a former quarterback at my university, I understand the everyday life of a student athlete and what goes into being successful on the field and in the classroom. Many hours are spent training at practice and in the weight room studying film, and even though you may be exhausted, you still have to either study for your test or make sure you turn your assignment in on time before you go to sleep. Knowing that your institution can be rewarded for your academic success will make a huge impact on the success of all the student athletes in the classroom. And I also feel like we will definitely see an increase of graduation rates. Now, as far as the criteria, a school must meet one of these three standards. Division I APR for the previous year is equal to or greater than 985. The average of single year scores for all teams is used to determine the eligibility for this standard. Second, the graduation success rate for the most recently available year is equal to or greater than 90%. Lastly, the difference between the student athlete and student body percentages in the most recently published graduation rate is equal to or greater than 13 percentage points. That is all for this month's compliance news. Back to you, Ms. Stills. Thank you for your updates and insight. Up next is our very own Noah Gooden with our feature sports and our plays of the week. What you got for us, Noah? And welcome to this month's edition of Noah Gooden's Run It Back. Well, I'm going to show you the top plays in MEAC sports this month. At number three, I'm going to take it down south and go with quarterback Ryan Stanley out of Florida and m University. In the red zone. See something he likes. Goes for it! Just near the goal line, and it's good for a touchdown. At number two, I'm going to take you to the campus of North Carolina Central University, where cornerback Brian Mills locked three picks in the game against Morgan State. The three picks were the most by an Eagle since 1996, when Adrian Jones accomplished the feat. Mills is just the fourth Eagle to do so again. in the game. You asked for two, you got to. Brian Mills. Goes on the play fake, going over the top to the near side. Intercepted by Brian Mills. That's his third today. My top player of the month, I gotta show love to Elijah Bell out of North Carolina ANC. The Aggies receiver had my top player of the month for his crazy one-handed touchdown grab against Elon in the back corner of the end zone, which broke the school record for touchdowns with 26. And that's about for this month's edition of Running Back. Special shout out there to the all the MEAC athletes doing their thing. And with that, I'm gonna pass it back over to Ms. Stills. Thanks, Noah. The MEAC sure has some talented student athletes. Hey ladies, have you ever hesitated to advance yourself professionally, felt underqualified? 
thought that a man might be better suited, or thought you were just a few qualifications short of having what it takes to make your next move. The MEAC wants to ask, why not you? Come join us in Atlanta, December 16th and 17th at the MEAC Women in Athletics Professional Development Workshop as we kick off the Celebration Bowl week with an empowering two-day seminar for women who aspire to and women who are currently working in athletic administration. Well, that's all for today, MEAC family. Be sure to follow us on the MEAC social media platforms. And until next time, if you can't be anything else, just be epic. <laughs>